Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Recently, our local warehouse store started carrying veal. I haven't cooked with veal much in the past. I did in cooking classes, but I rarely ever bought it. When I saw it at the warehouse store, I thought, okay, now is the time to start cooking with veal. I've had this one recipe that I like. It's from an old cookbook back in the 1970s, and I like this cookbook because this author obviously hated the French. He devoted a lot of his book to trying to prove that the Italians, the Italian chefs learned nothing from the French. It was the French who stole Italian cuisine, mm, added a few sauces, and then called it French cuisine. Whatever. This recipe is delicious. It's called veal involtini. Involtini, I believe, is Italian for rolls. You flatten a piece of veal, put some stuffing on it, roll it up, tie it brown it in a skillet, add some wine, cook it. It's all done in the skillet. You don't have to use an oven on a warm day. And they are really delicious. I've made these before. I really like these things. So next, let's get into the ingredients I'm going to be using for making my veal in Voltini. What I have here is six thin slices of veal. This is referred to usually as scallopini. Try to find them anywhere between 2 to 4 ounces or 57 to 113 grams each, whatever is available. In the warehouse store, these are closer to 2 ounces than they are to 4 ounces, but they'll work. And then I have 3 ounces or 85 grams of mozzarella cheese that I've diced. 3 pounds, again 85 grams of prosciutto diced. If you can, purchase it in one piece. It'll be a lot easier to work with. And then seven sprigs of Italian parsley, leaves only. I coarsely chopped those. One and a half ounces, which is about three-eighths of a cup or 43 grams of Parmigiano or Romano cheese. Grated, I'm using Romano because I prefer Romano. Salt and freshly ground pepper to taste. I'm going to go light on the salt because it's salt in Romano cheese. And then all-purpose flour for dusting. Then two tablespoons of olive oil for frying and about one half cup of wine. That's 108, 118 milliliters, and that's dry white wine. So those are the ingredients for my veal in Voltini. My first step here is to pound my veal. So I have some parchment paper set up here. I'm going to put a piece of veal on there. And then you can use the smooth side of a meat mallet or you can use a rubber mallet. I'm going to use my whacker spoon. The inventor of this gave me one for free. So you want to pound this down so it's relatively thin, a lot thinner, and it'll spread out a little bit. Take your time with it. Don't hit it so hard that you break it and put holes in the meat. You just want to keep working with it until it's hammered down. Turn it over. Okay. I'm happy with that. That's my piece ready now for filling. I have five more of these to do when I have them all hammered down. We'll start working on the filling. The stuffing is pretty simple. There's my cubed or diced prosciutto, mozzarella cheese, coarsely chopped parsley, and finally my Romano cheese. And then just mix that up. One thing I did forgot, forget to do is I do want to add some freshly ground black pepper to that. And that should be fine. Okay, now I can begin stuffing my veal. To stuff this veal, 
roughly use about a sixth of my stuffing here. Spread this. I think I'm going to turn this around. I like this end better. What I want to do is I want to leave one section, the last section, without any stuffing. Okay, that's about a sixth, maybe. A little more Romano on there. And then just start rolling from one end. This, the stuffing is going to fall out. That's all right. I mean, stick in what you can. Whatever falls out, don't worry about it. Most of it's going to stay in there. And then roll down to the end. And then take a piece of kitchen twine. and tie this into a little bundle. Like so. If you want to, if you're concerned about some of the stuffing coming out from the inside, you can add a second piece. I do this sometimes, sometimes I don't. and tie the end in. I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. Some of the stuffing is going to come out anyways, especially when it cooks, because that cheese is going to melt. So it's your choice. I think one tie is enough. It's one less to clip off later on when you're ready to serve. My next step is to dredge these in flour. You could put some flour on a plate and roll them in flour. I'm just going to use a duster and dust them in flour. I don't think it's all that critical how it's done. You just basically want to flour the outside. So there they are dusted with flour. These are ready to now brown in a skillet. I've got a skillet heating on the stove here. I'm going to put a couple tablespoons or so of olive oil in there. Let that heat up. And here's what I want to experiment with. What if I were to take my overly stuffed in Voltini that doesn't have the string around the outside and just do the ends first. Just a little bit. I'm thinking the cheese is going to melt a little bit and that's going to hold my stuffing inside. Voila, like so. Okay, and then my next step is to, as soon as this end is cooked a little bit, I'm going to start browning all of my involtini. Some stuffing is going to leak out. I'm not going to really care. I just want to experiment with these three. All right, I'm satisfied with those. Place all of them in the oil. And then over medium, medium-high heat, you want to just brown these, turning them a little bit, maybe two or three minutes on each turn. So the total browning is about eight to ten minutes. My involtini has been browned. I'm going to lightly season this with some black pepper. Not a whole lot because there's black pepper inside. I didn't put any salt inside because the Romano cheese 
has salt in it. So I'm going to lightly salt it now on the outside. And then I'm going to pour in about half a cup of dry white wine. That didn't sizzle up because I turned the heat off. I think that's closer to three quarters of a cup. But that's all right. Bring the heat back up. Bring this to a boil. And then I'm going to let this cook for about 10 minutes, simmering with the heat on low and to reduce that sauce down. And I'm going to use that sauce after I spoon off some of the oil as a garnish when I serve my involtini. To serve the involtini, after they've finished simmering for about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes, let them rest for about 10 minutes. I've got some broccoli, cauliflower, and yellow carrots on this plate here. There's one of my involtinis. I do want to remove that string. Beautiful. And then, just a little bit of the pan juices. over the top like so. And there you have veal in Voltini. The last step is to taste that and see how good it tastes. Just waiting to see how delicious this is going to taste. Excellent. What I like about this is the mixed texture. The veal is very tender, but you have that chewy prosciutto in there. You can taste the cheese, you can taste the parsley. It's not a lot of work. You saw how I made this. I think this is good for a Sunday dinner, special occasions. Okay, excuse me. I've got to go enjoy my veal in Voltini. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.